ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. I don't know. I don't have a good intro. Welcome to my office. Again, still a big hole in the back happens. I got something cool today. Look at this keyboard. That way. This is the Roarcat Vulcan 120. Uh, the AMO part is, is actually lighting. It's just grabbing their lighting system. Uh, this is really a friggin' cool keyboard, guys. I got this today, just in today from Roarcat. Um, we're gonna open it up, take a look at it. Um, just real quick, let's take a look at the back. So, as you can see, this features their new Titan switch, uh, which they describe as having speed, durability, and illumination. Um, I've not seen this board in person yet, ever. Uh, I haven't been to a show in a little while, so I haven't seen it in person. Um, this is a, a demo model. <laughs> Dang, my cat's trying to get up on the desk. Um, so we're going to take a look and see what it looks like. Um, obviously, I already have a keyboard plugged in. That's how computers work. You plug in a keyboard to make them work. Uh, and so I want to take a look at unboxing it first, and then we can plug it in, and we'll do a little second segment on that. Nice box. Yeah. Hmm. Ooh, there we go. Nice box. Um, it's a good box. A nice box. A good box. Uh, and it kind of just pulls straight out like this and all that's in the box is the keyboard and the wrist rest Not that you really need anything else. I mean, it's a keyboard, right guys? I wasn't expecting a bunch of freebies um, So let's take a look. Oh, and there's of course a manual And some software. We'll dump that over there Let's get this baby out of its plastic headphone users. I'm sorry for what you just heard Let's take a look this is a, an interesting keyboard. So, um, those of you that, that have followed me for a while know that I am currently running a Corsair K65. Uh, the Corsair K65 has a deck like this one. Beautiful elevated deck. Um, this guy does not have uh, the, the lip that the Corsair keyboard has. So it's got a, like a, just a complete elevated row of, key, row of keys on both sides, uh, as you can see. It's very light. Uh, I like how light it is. Uh, good for travel. We've got some media buttons here. Uh, looks like we've got a mute. Uh, this is the lighting FX button. I'll bring that over here so you can see it better. And then a little volume control nibble. Oh, that has a really nice feel to it. Uh, really nice twisty feel. And then of course this. The reason that I was interested in this keyboard to begin with. Oh, here's some Rocat. Some Rocat goodies. Set the rules. Uh, if you've ever heard of Roarcat, they make amazing peripherals, uh, first of all. I, I've reviewed a bunch of their stuff, including uh, some of their, their lap board. They, do, they did a lap board at E3 two years ago that impressed me so much I had to have it. This is the Vulcan uh, 120 AMO, and again, AMO just is the, their lighting system. So, it's very pretty. I'm going to try to put this next to the microphone. The keys are, uh, are soft. They're not... Um, you're not going to get that actuation click like you get with, uh, well, what I have now. Um, these are custom key switches. They are not red switches. These are custom switches that are made by Roarcat. So they're brand new, never before uh, the scene. And they have the LEDs inside the switch. Oh, the Titan switch. This is called the Titan switch. Uh, so let's see if we can get the Titan switch boy plugged in here. Uh, something that's kind of cool, only one USB uh, port required. Uh, most keyboards that are light up require two. One for data transmission and one for power. And there she is. How about that? Uh, I'm going to probably have to turn off some of the lights for you guys to see this. Oh, no. You don't actually have to turn off lights at all. Wow. That's bright. It's pretty. Wow. It's pretty and it's bright. But wow, that is a bright, bright keyboard. Um, And the switches, uh, the since the LEDs are inside of the switches, you can really see them. Um, let me turn off some of my lights here in the office and we'll get a little bit more of a picture of what it looks like. Look, I mean, just look at those lights. That's so bright. I mean, look how bright that is. Uh, get closer maybe. So obviously it's kind of just in a rainbow pan mode right now. Um, but look how cool it looks from, so it sits kind of like this. It's got tabs on the bottom, of course, like every keyboard. Uh, so you can, sorry. I'm not good at flipping tabs upside down. So you can flip your tabs. The tabs are a little tweet there. 
Um, but I mean, from looking at it from the front, I'll try to give you guys a good angle. So it's slightly elevated, so you basically see this. And this is just an absolutely beautiful keyboard. Uh, I was looking at the top just now, I noticed there was no no numlock scroll lock numbers. Uh, no, no, no normal keys for numlock and scroll lock. They're down here. Uh, you can see those right there. So if I push the caps lock on this side, it should light up. Yeah. See that? So that's the caps lock right there. Interesting spot for it. Um, the wrist rest right here. Let's see if the wrist rest covers it. I don't think it will, but it sort of just uh, slots in. Oh, it's is it magnetic? Well, that's interesting. I don't think I've ever seen that before. The wrist rest is magnetic. Um, very lightly magnetized. Um, I can't actually get it. I can't actually hold it up with the wrist rest on it because the magnet isn't strong enough. Um, so I guess take that for what you will. But um, well, maybe I can if I'm really. It's, it's gonna be upside down, guys. I'm sorry. There you go. That's what it looks like with the wrist rest on. So you can still see the lights, no problem, uh, which is good. The lights for the numb lock and the scroll lock and the caps lock, obviously. You can see the lights, the LED lights on this thing, no matter what you do. Just gonna push this keyboard out of the way here. Bring the Roar Cat guy in. Sorry, my desk is a mess. And uh, let's see if we can point this down a little bit. There we go. So this is what it looks like on your desk. Let's turn the lights off on that guy. Um, it's lovely. Uh, I have to say, it's really nice. Let me bring up a Word document just to do a little touch typing. You guys have to promise not to make fun of my really, really bad typing, typist skills. It's bright. Um, I, I, like I said, I can't turn it up or down because I don't have the software installed. Um, something to keep in mind, I guess. Oh my god, it's so quiet. I mean, you could take this to your office. Um, there's a ton of actuation in these keys. I can feel um, so much. I wonder if I can turn the lights off. Oh, I can change the direction. It feels really good when you're typing. So the keys have this slightly convex top. Um, so you can feel there, like you go underneath them. Obviously, the home row has its uh, its little dots and things, its little uh, little textured pieces there. And the ta top texture is it's, it's very smooth. I don't know how to. Um, how to describe that other than to say that it feels really, really smooth. Um, which is a strange, strange way to describe the feelings on a, of, a key, of a set of keycaps, but it just feels, they feel really smooth to the touch. Um, so we've got a few different buttons here that I'm going to show you by touching them because you can't read them. Um, we've got macro keys uh, and where the insert and home keys are. Insert home, page up, page down, delete and end are all normal keys, and then if you hit the FN, which is right here they can become macro keys. Um, on the top of the scroll lock, we have our game mode, which should disable the Windows key, which it does indeed. Uh, so as I press this Windows key, nothing is happening on screen. So the game mode is right there. And then after that, we've got a bunch of uh, function keys up here that also have F, uh, alternates. So on F1, F2, F3, and F4, we have user profiles, which I'm guessing we can configure through the swarm app, which is what controls the lighting. Um, we've got a key here that looks like a PC. I'm not going to press that because I don't know what it does. <laughs> we've got a www, which presumably will give us a web browser. Uh, we've got one for here for email. And we've got one here that looks like it's a calculator, which is kind of cool because I love calculator. Uh, having a dedicated calculator button. Uh, and then moving on in F9, F10, F11, F12 servers are media keys. I'm not big on using media keys. Some people swear by them. That's on you whether you want them or not. Um, not for me. That's it as far as... Uh, function keys goes. So not a ton of them, um, especially you're not going to be using these macro keys when you need to, like without holding a multiple keys down. You're not going to be punching these in Battlefield to do something special or change weapons. Um, they're probably just going to be useful if you want to use the program them for like various sets of functions on the keyboard uh, to do more, more than one function at once. Either way, um, it's still a lot of functions. And then of course we've got a dedicated volume button here, um, and then the FX light button, and a mute. And the mute key actually works without software, so 
mute a mute works. Um, and then the press the volume key, I can use this little uh, radio style nub here, which is awesome, by the way. I really dig this this attorney button. And that's about it for physical features of the keyboard, as far as physical features go. Uh, obviously, the biggest thing is that the deck, there's nothing around the key switches, right? And that, that helps a lot with the lighting. Um, if you're a fan of big of lighting, this is a cool keyboard because it's very, very, very bright. It's going to have all the different modes. Um, I can't say much about the Amos, about the software that runs it, uh, which is actually called Swarm. I keep calling it Amo, but it's actually called Swarm. Um, the Swarm software, I haven't had a chance to play around with it yet. I'll download it and play around with it and let you guys know a little bit more once I've kind of gotten uh, to take a look at it. One thing that I can tell you off the bat that I'm not a big fan of is there's no dedicated button to turn off the lights. Um, as you saw on my Corsair keyboard, if I press a certain button, the lights go back on. Look how much brighter this one is, though. Um, and this is actually, I think, that's the, that's the max brightness for the Corsair keyboard right there, just to give you an idea of how much brighter this Rare Cat board is. Now, obviously, we're dealing with a clear keycap here. Um, this, if you can even call it a keycap, it's more like it's almost like a typewriter key face. Um, versus on here, we have obviously dark colored keycaps, just and the light is mostly showing up underneath. But the amount of difference in the color is just huge. These are so much brighter. And like I said, uh, these are not any traditional switches. We're using the Titan switch here, Rocat's Titan switches. They say that the bounce time is reduced by 20% to 4 milliseconds, um, which is very fast. Uh, so that's great for, I guess, Twitch gaming. They say this top is made of anodized aluminum, uh, which is good, but it's probably going to get pretty dirty, so I would recommend keeping air nearby so you can, you know, blow it off because it's going to be pretty dark. Um, the switches, in case you actually want to know, um, they're basically modeled after brown switches. They have a 1.8 millimeter actuation point. The macro settings are integrated, are integrated, so I must be able to put them in in the software and then pull them out uh, and then go back to them once they're installed on there. Um, it doesn't say anything about NQ rollover, um, which is very strange. Uh, it does have a an ARM Cortex ML processor in it and a thousand hertz polling rate and a nice 1.8 meter cable, and it only weighs 1150 grams. That's pretty light. That's a, for a keyboard. I mean, that's very light. Um, it's considerably lighter than my other keyboard, um, which is fine. Um, I'm not trashing my other keyboard. It's just that this one is very light. It would be much more useful for travel. All right, everybody. So welcome back. I managed to get the Rocat Swarm software installed. No small feat, actually. It was <laughs> much more difficult than I think it should have been. Um, and then once I had it installed, it spent a bunch of time updating. So we're going to spend a little time jockeying back and forth between the software and the keyboard. I'm going to keep the little down there looking at the keyboard. Um, looks like the mute button is blinking because it's muted. So that's a feature that, was, that wasn't that was there before. Um, when the sound is muted, the mute button blinks. That's kind of cool. Uh, if we press the FX key, we'll now see that this is going to go solid. Um, but let's get to the lighting in a, in a, Let's get to the lighting after this. So let's take a look. You can keep an eye on that top row there to give you an idea. Right now it's sort of slowly bleeding colors in and out. So let's take a look at our general features to start with. Um, so actually first thing we can do is you can see these are all widgets so we can add or remove things we want and then on the bottom down here we have profile manager as well. We'll get to all that in a bit but first let's take a look at our settings. So we can add a click sound. Oh, this is sort of cool. I'm going to see if it'll record it. And it closed the software again. Guys, I am just... Boy, I'm just really, really frustrated with this software right now. Um, this is very frustrating. Uh, Warcat, if you're watching this, the Sova software is just not very good. So... Okay, I hate that. Um, I really hate that. Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna screw around with that. Um, apparently, hitting apply uh, causes the software to restart. So uh, we're not gonna hit apply. Oh, maybe not. There we go. Now we've got a click. The beam sound. There we go, so the software sort of grays out. 
What? <laughs> I can't imagine anyone wanting to use that. Um, there's also a volume slider here for that. Um, which was the volume? That's coming out of the computer speakers, guys. There's no speaker on board this keyboard. Um, so if I if I mute the computer speakers, then there's no more sound. Pressing, no sound. Um, just just for the the purposes of, I guess for you know whatever reason, let's try. Oops, that's not that one. Sorry. Let's try uh, and see if we can hear what the sci-fi sound sounds like too. Um, I guess it would be wrong to not hear all of them. Ouch. That's unpleasant. Distinctly unpleasant noise. Um, let's go back to no sound on that one. Um, I did toggle on the bottom. There's a little switch for auto apply, so that's why it's doing that. I'm, and hopefully that'll stop the software from crashing on us. So in the general features we have, uh, we have the ability to reset our settings. We've got that sound feedback. Uh, we have the ability to switch profile sound, profile switches based on those one, two, three, and four keys I demonstrated earlier. The wake up sound and the sleep sound. I'm not going to use any of this. I'm not a big person for audit. I'm not big on auditory feedback. If you guys like auditory feedback, you can add it. Uh, again, like I said, it comes out of the computer speakers and it requires the Swarm software to be installed, so uh, I'm not interested in any of that. Um, if we want to add or remove widgets, we have a settings. Our Swarm settings have settings. Yo, dog, I heard you like settings, so I put settings in your settings. Um, we're not going to delve too deep into these. There's not much there. There's updates, monitoring, and help menus. Um, but there are more things you can pin here if you want. Uh, this is a character repeat amount. You can t how much time it takes after how much like after. So if you like, if you're able to type so fast that it doesn't show up like that, uh, I don't mess with any of that stuff. <laughs> it just doesn't. It, you know, I'm fine with stock. But if you're heavily into customizing how your keyboard works, that might be your thing. This is key assignment. You can assign any key, any macro. Um, so let's open the basic functions menu, um, which gives us F1, F2, F3, and F4. The Ruricat functions menu, um, something that I didn't mention because I just didn't know it, um, is that this button, this what would be a caps lock button on every other keyboard serves an alternate purpose here as well. Um, that is, let me see down this button my finger's on right here. It's hard to see, it's a little blurry. Sorry guys, the webcam got really blurry when I adjusted my, um, when I adjusted where it was pointing, but I just want you to be able to see the lights mostly. So that button, you can actually adjust the macro on. Um, the system and OS buttons, um, the internet button, which you can tell to do different things. The multimedia buttons, which we discussed earlier. The open buttons, uh, we have a computer sleep, an email, and a calculator, and the timer button, which I don't really know what that is, um, so maybe if you're doing like timing splits, you're like testing something, I don't know. Um, as you can see, it'll highlight which, what switches were, what buttons were about to change. Um, you can add your own macros to any key you want. Um, you can add a new macro, so you just drag, drag this, add a new macro. Um, I don't know, let's say we want to put a macro on the Z key. And then if we press the game shift mode, on the Z key. So we go to game shift. Oh, we got to lift this up a bit. Sorry, guys. There you go. So selected key, you see we have the Z key here. And if we have the original function, which is the normal one, then we can change the shift key function to something else if we want. We can change it to whatever we want. Um, that's a unique feature. Uh, a lot of people probably are going to make cool presets for this. Um, it's again, not something that I will find myself using very often. I just don't have a lot of need for custom key mapping. But if you're a streamer, maybe you want to map some scenes to like shift three or shift four, or like, so like maybe you want to, well, those, that's a bad example because they already have shift keys assigned, but maybe you want to map them to like numpad seven or numpad eight or numpad nine and that have that change your scene or start or stop your stream. Um, and you can do that using these different functions here, which is cool. And you can do that for any key on the keyboard. Um, there's also a list view if you would rather not have it done graphically. This should remind anyone who's ever played a video game of what it looks like when you 
see the mapping profile in the game. You can map anything to basically anything else. It's a neat feature. It's not something that a lot of people are going to take advantage of, I don't think, but it's a neat feature. Um, if you're more a power user, then maybe you will take more advantage of it. Um, so then we're going to take a look at the lighting here. We've got different type of illuminations here. We have our AMO Intelligent Lighting System. I'm gonna, you can't actually see what it says, so there you go. AMO, a state-of-the-art intelligent lighting system that reacts organically to your behavior without the need for extensive configuration. It is enriched by the apps and devices you use, presenting fluid, nature-inspired scenarios, which is fancy PR speak for the keyboard does cool stuff when you have different apps open. Um, so say you're playing, like, Call of Duty. It might turn red when you're getting shot at, taking damage, whatever. Now you can go to the second, if I go to another profile here, uh, make a profile, so let's just we'll call it default, we don't need to you know, change a lot about it. Now we are in profile two, profile slot two here, so it can go back profile slot one, profile slot two. And all the macros and features and everything are assigned via those profile slots, which is super cool. Um, unfortunately those don't sit on board the keyboard so as far as I'm aware they don't sit on board the keyboard and so that means that <laughs> once you're once you're done you're done uh, once you pick your keyboard up and leave unless you have the swarm software installed somewhere else you're not going to be able to do anything with it so let's take a look at the keyboard again so right now we're looking at a sort of green and orange and um, the key color it changes when I hit the key it's hard to see it's really very difficult to see but you press it, there you go, it lights up. Um, so that's probably just for the typing mode. <laughs> the keys are also configurable individually. If you want to configure them individually, you do not have to use the IMO. All right, I have, I have something absolutely crazy going on with this software, you guys. I don't believe it. I don't. I don't know what's going on with it. Um, I had to, to spin it up just to show you. So this is the the Swarm app that does not adapt very well to a 4K monitor. Uh, as you can see, there's an incredibly large amount of empty space and a very, very stretched JPEG. However, you know how I couldn't get anything to come up? Well, I got it to come up, but only by switching it over to a monitor that it shouldn't have to be on. So I'm going to see if I can even get you guys to see this at least see the options it's so hard to see that oh man I don't think you guys are gonna be able to. all right so we've got several modes right here we go we've got a, our intelligent lighting lighting system mode well, we can now we can move this down a little bit maybe we can there we go we've got an intelligent lighting mode our AMO intelligent lighting mode system the wave mode here now we're gonna turn auto apply back on there is a preview over here what it's going to look like. So there's the wave mode. We can change the speed and the brightness of the wave mode. Oh, there you go. It's wave mode going on there. And then we've got snake mode. Uh, this mode's actually really cool. Um, so we can choose different themes for the snake mode. Um, so you can see right now it's set to uh, like an orange theme. snakes around runs like an orange theme it would look really cool except for the fact that when it gets down to the space bar it doesn't really work because the space bar is uh, and when you type of course you're not seeing any light um but we can change the theme color so we could do like uh, here it's purple and blue purple and blue is super popular right now there you go snake mode it's kind of kind of cool um a strange mode for sure Fully lit mode, um, shield your eyes. Uh, it's really bright, guys. Um, it's fully lit mode is, is just, oh. Uh oh. I think we have some. I have a bit of a problem on the keyboard itself here, guys. Um, it's clear that the, the software needs a bit of tweaking. Um, let's see if we change it off of the heartbeat mode. Will it will that fix it? Um, yes, so now we've got a sort of uh, back and forth heartbeat. I am no fan of that. That is, I don't know who would want that. 
Let's see if we can get fully lit mode to work here. Um, yes, there we go. So, well, it worked for a second. <laughs> Clearly, there's some issues there. It's supposed to look like this. It's supposed to be fully lit purple. Um, obviously, it's not right now, so I don't know what's going on with that. Um, I I'm going to forgive it because it's just a sort of a bit of an early... Uh, we're still a bit early in the life cycle of the product, so I'm gonna have to go ahead and forgive that. It works with red. I guess it just doesn't like that purple color. And of course, we can uh, do a custom colors for anything we want. Um, so if I change that to this, the custom right there, then what I get is these options over here where I can modify colors. Uh, so let's say I want to make the. This looks like it's going by quadrants. So let's say I want to make that quadrant purple. And then I want to make this quadrant red, and then I want to make this one pink. I like that. And then I want to make this one uh, kitty cat meow meow noise pink as well. And then I want to make our last one red. I mean, there you go, right there. I got a cool pink and red color scheme. So that I can do custom like that. This is the 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 always on mode. So. Um, there's also one that will let me, the fully lit mode rather, there's also one that will let me paint individual key colors. That's pretty neat. Um, so you can easily change those. Like if I, let's see, I want to change the middle one to green. Oh, as soon as I click out, it should save it. And there you go. Now it's green. Um, it's very cool. I like that. Uh, well, we can go back to the theme and the theme will change whatever color we want it. Uh, so here's a green theme. Um, we can pretend that we're razor. There you go. It's a non-copyright infringing green color. Uh, then we have Heartbeat. We had Heartbeat 2.0. Now we've got Breathing 2.0. I'm assuming it's called 2.0 because, you know, there was a 1.0 at one point. Um, this is a very, very strange way to light your keyboard. <laughs> I'm not, again, not for me. Uh, that's all right, though. You know, maybe some people like it. Um, you can adjust the speed and brightness on all of these. Um, from heartbeat to breathing to fade effects to ripple effects. So fade effects uh, right here you'll see this one will let you set up a key. So let's say if I press a key like that. And uh, the key and it will fade out. Um, and of course we can, if we go to custom over here, we'll be able to set our different zone colors. Uh, look, we've got five zones again. So let's say we want purple. We'll go with some, some pre-made colors. Purple, pink. You guys haven't can't tell I like purple and pink. Purple. Oh, I think I clicked blue on that one. Whatever. Uh, we'll do pink on this one as well. And we got two more to go, guys. Bear with me. Sorry, the software is a little, a little bit slow. Um, this could be because I have it plugged into a USB hub and it's not directly plugged into a USB 3.0 on my computer. Um, I'm going to give it a little bit of uh, leeway because of that. All right, so now we've got a just a really fast custom design here. So if we type, we've got all sorts of different colors. Uh, and over here, of course, also. Nice. I like that. I mean, that's, this is definitely a lot easier to use. Um, if they could figure out, if I can figure out why the software is doing what it is. Um, something with the resolution, I think. But let's let's revisit that in a minute. Um, so here's a ripple effects. Uh, ripple effect, rather. Um, again, we have our presets. Um, let's, let's choose a preset here. All the presets are the same sets of colors. Uh, so let's choose this purple-pink one. Uh, so we'll set it. And uh, let's turn the ripple speed up just a tad. There we go. So it's a little bit faster. Okay. So, uh, this is a really popular one. But uh, once you start to type a little faster, it kind of just, you know, just all lit up all the time. But if you're playing like a battlefield, you hold down W, A, S, and D or whatever. It looks pretty cool. Um, I could live with that. And of course, you can custom, just like all the others, you can custom design this one, get your five zones of color. So if you want to, you can change the color zones. And the last one is a completely custom mode. Uh, so this is going to be the one that most people are probably going to use um, if you're into customing your shit. So basically, 
Uh, but it's going to be difficult to explain this with the uh, resolution as high as it is. I apologize, guys. It, this monitor is 4K, so it makes it really hard to actually see what's going on. So on the bottom, there's a, first we have a color theme picker. So let's say we just want a theme that's purple. And then we want an effect. Let's do a heartbeat effect. And let's make it go here. Put it maximum brightness. And then we should be able to select the keys we want to do it on. So if we do a highlight like that, and then these keys will be that setting. All right, so then we've got right now, so if we, if we just, well, let's not do the whole thing at once. That's a bad example. Let's do the top. Let's make a little, a little flag, like a little, a little, a little cheap little transgender flag here. A little pink and blue action. So we'll make this top one pink. Um, let's not have it be fully lit because that's that's not cool. Let's have it be heartbeat, um, and of course max brightness. All right, and then we'll do the middle row. The middle two rows here, and we're gonna make it a slightly bluer blue. Uh, it's not quite the right blue. We want like a little lighter, lighter blue. There we go. Oh, there's also a, a section here. You can't quite see it, but there's a section here for color flow. Um, so we can do if we set a color flow, we can. The color should change as we go. So let's that's good for the middle bar there. And now let's do the bottom two. Oh, I, I clicked that poorly. And of course you can do this with any number of, of keys if you want to make it spell out. You know, you want to make it spell out hello? Make it spell out hello. Hey, really do whatever you want with it. That's that's kind of the cool part, right? So there we go. Um, and let's take a look at the actual keyboard itself. So we've got a breathing effect on the top. Um, now the one thing is it's very difficult to modify this. As you can see, it's not super easy to modify this after you've set it. So you kind of want to get it right the first time. So if I want to change this effect on there uh, to breathing as well. And the same for the goes for the bottom. I'll change it to breathing as well. And then you go. We've got a pretty cool uh, blue and purple breathing keyboard. Um, it's causing my webcam to have little fits because it's trying to focus, but there you go. Um, I made the top go a little faster. Um, we want to set this to middle. If I do it right, and I set them all to the same speed, then they should breathe at the same time. I just want to change the speed will let me no it won't well it was worth a try so now you can see that I've got a breathing pink and blue keyboard um, that's pretty cool and that is all just set right here like I said you just kind of drag it like this down the side so if you want to do a row of uh, you want to do a row a row of bright red keys on this side well, there you go there's a row of bright red keys on that side look at that got breathing and I think just to complete the effect what I'll do is I'll put a row of bright reds on this side too now I'm just having fun um, I mean why not right might as well so I put a row of bright reds over on this side of course there's only three keys over there so it's not as pretty but that's fine we'll turn this to bright red There you go. We've uh, we've designed a custom keyboard layout in just a few minutes. It's very easy once you realize that there's some kind of weird problem with the um, whole can with the whole listing thing here. So um, again, I don't know what was going on, but this menu right here, I couldn't get it to drop down. Uh, I wish I could show you guys what it looked like on the other monitor, but you saw me struggling with it earlier. Um, but I did manage to figure it out. And it is very easy to make custom pattern keyboards, um, and it may look really great. Um, obviously, you can save these, and you can move them from profile to profile. So we're on profile slot two right now. Um, 
Let me bring the mom. Go ahead and bring the camera back here. So we're on profile slot two right now, as you can see. So if I go back to profile slot one, and then we will lose all of our pretty colors, and we'll just go back to a standard coloring. So we can have up to four of those installed at once. Boy, my webcam really doesn't like this, does it? So now we're just on like a, a standard breathing effect, and um, we're actually using the AMO Intelligent Lighting System. Um, earlier, I sort of clicked the AMO button over here, and it looks like it's only about 35% of the way done with knowing. Oh, there's a little 35% right there. So supposedly what the AMO system does is learn from you, so 35%. That's all. I just wanted to show you guys that it does indeed work. Um, for some reason, it didn't like the resolution on my previous keyboard. I don't know what it was on my other monitor. I don't know what it was about that. It's not like a weird resolution or anything. It's a totally standard um, 1920 by 1080 monitor. I'm not sure why it decided that it didn't want to use that. Um, whatever the reason, the heart of the shoes, uh, it didn't work. So. Now I have gotten it working, and I wanted to show you guys the software, the internal, what it looks like when you change it up. Thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully you'll see a full written review of this guy um, again a couple of weeks again. I need to spend a little bit of time actually typing on it. I'm probably going to take it into the office, throw it through its paces at the office. So far it feels great. Um, keep an eye out for that written review on www.kitsuga.com. Big thanks to Rorkat for sending this guy over to have a look. Uh, so that I can have a look at him. Um, again, this is the Vulcan 120 AMO model because it has that AMO intelligent lighting. And thanks for to Rokat for sending it over, and I hope you guys have really enjoyed this batched together, put together review. Um, and uh, stick around. You subscribe to us on YouTube for lots more content like this.